Hello everyone, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Today, it's uh, Mob Movie Monday with Godfather One. That means on Monday, it's another Mob Movie Monday. And I gotta say, this is becoming a favorite of all my viewers and uh, you're enjoying it, so am I. And today's a special one, but before I get into that, just a couple of things. Uh, tomorrow, don't forget, tune in for part two of the Bruce McNall interview, the sit down rather, I should say. Uh, it's gonna be a good one, you're gonna enjoy it. I know many of you loved uh, his part one. Uh, this part two is even better. So that's tomorrow, Tuesday, October 20th. I also, again, ask for all your prayers. My daughter's going in for surgery tomorrow, and uh, you've been also gracious and kind, and I thank you for uh, your prayers and your, 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 just your kindness in, in sending uh, your regards to her. So uh, remember that. Uh, but today we're gonna do a very special film. It is Godfather One, and people, I can tell you, I can talk about this for the next two or three hours. Uh, we won't, obviously, we don't get your attention for that long a time, but this will be one uh, of many parts that we'll do on the movie The Godfather 1 and Godfather 2, two of the greatest movies of all time. Godfather 3, we're not going to talk about. Uh, they lost it there. I can tell you that Francis Coppola, he did not want to do uh, part 3. Uh, Paramount kind of pushed him into it, so we're going to put that one on the side. Godfather 1 and 2, great. But today, it's uh, Mob Movie Monday with Godfather 1. So uh, before I get into some of the particular scenes, and for me, every scene was dynamic in this movie. Just loved it. Every scene was great. Um, I can tell you this. After the filming of The Godfather, guys in the street were actually taking on a different look. It kind of brought a, a, a level of integrity and dignity to the mob that quite possibly wasn't there before. Now remember, this was early on in my years, it was the early 70s, and I was just getting involved in the life uh, at that time, but I even noticed it. But let me tell you a few things, kind of, uh, kind of set the tone or the pace or, the, or the, uh, you know, the feeling that was around during that time. It was early 1970s, and um, Joe Colombo had just started the Italian American Civil Rights League. At around the same time, um, the Godfather book by Mario Puzo had been written. Uh, Paramount picked it up to do a movie on it. They hired uh, Al Ruddy to be the producer and Francis Ford uh, Coppola to direct the film. And they were getting the film ready at that time. Now, at the same time they're getting that film ready about the mafia, uh, Joe Colombo forms the Italian American Civil Rights League and is very upset because he said the FBI and the Justice Department were harassing Italian Americans. They had arrested his son on some, turned out to be a phony charge that he was melting down uh, coins for their silver value. And that prompted Joe Colombo to start picketing the FBI building. I can tell you I was one of the first ones on the picket line, 69th Street and 3rd Avenue, because I saw it as a way to help my dad, who was just sentenced to 50 years in prison. And in 1970, he had just gone away. So all this was happening at the same time. Wasn't the greatest time to start filming a mafia movie in New York. When Joe Colombo heard about it, very upset, he said, no way you're gonna film this. Uh, he, had, he had put the word out that nobody was to support the film. They were gonna have union problems. Uh, it was not gonna be shot. And if he didn't get a piece of the proceeds, it wouldn't be shot at all. So that was the kind of thing he laid on Al Ruddy, the producer at that time. And um, you know, so you had Francis Ford Coppola, the director, they were all in a state of panic. What are we gonna do? They wanted to shoot the film in New York for the authenticity. Little Italy, they want this authentic in every way. But anyway, uh, so there's a problem immediately. Al Ruddy reaches out to Joe Colombo and has a meeting with Anthony Colombo. And during that meeting, a couple of things were established. Number one, um, they agreed that the word mafia and Cosa Nostra would not be used in the script at all, it was taken out. Number two, that Joe Colombo and his team would have um, authority over the script. They were able to read it and they were able to, able to approve it in many ways. 
So uh, they were actually stripped, the, uh, the Colombo family was script consultants to the movie The Godfather. Number three, when and if the movie were to pre premiere in New York, the proceeds from the uh, ticket sales from the New York premiere would be donated to a, a hospital of, of our choice. That was kind of three things that they were established. And uh, they also had to use some actors in the film. So I remember this specifically. We were at an Italian-American civil rights meeting at the Park Sheridan Hotel in New York, and Anthony Colombo introduces Al Ruddy to everybody in attendance. And I was sitting in the audience. First, he got booed, because when we heard about the film, you know, Mafia, all of that, he got booed. They didn't understand what was going on behind the scenes. So Anthony introduces Al Ruddy, and Al Ruddy starts to talk to the crowd, and all of the thing, things start to change because Al starts to let everybody know, uh, you know, some of the deals that were made and how he was going to make Italian Americans look good. This was not a knock on Italian Americans. And then Joe Colombo got up and kind of gave it the seal of approval. So that's when everything started to turn around. From that point on, anything that they wanted to do with the filming was okay with everybody. Restaurants that said that they wouldn't serve the cast and crew now opened their doors. Everything had changed when Joe Colombo uh, gave the okay for this. So it was, it was so interesting that these, were being, these things were happening at the same time. I'll tell you another fun fact. Um, at the end of the movie, I think it was um, on June 28th, we were at a huge Italian, and this was in 1971, huge Italian-American civil rights rally over at Columbus Circle. We had about 50,000 people there. It was the second uh, annual event, and it was huge. This one, we really filled up Columbus Circle. And uh, it was at that time that Joe Colombo uh, was shot and, and uh, nearly killed. He lingered for several years uh, in a coma until he died, I think seven or eight years later. But at the same time that was happening, Another filming of The Godfather was taking place, and um, by coincidence, the filming was at the end scene. Some of you may remember, I think everybody has seen The Godfather. The end scene was when uh, Michael was getting uh, revenge on all those that were against him, and he was killing people during the baptism, remember that? That was being filmed, from what I understanding, at the same time that Joe Colombo was being gunned down, Italian American Civil Rights League. Great scene, by the way, terrific scene. Uh, so that's one thing that was uh, uh, that I thought was very interesting. Another thing, another scene in the movie that I thought was very interesting is that when uh, Don Corleone, he was getting shot when he was on Mott Street, I think, or Mulberry Street. It just so happened that around the corner, at around the same time, Carlo Gambino, boss of the Gambino family, was actually in a restaurant and he was kind of holding court for a number of people. Now, what I mean by that, I got to go back to the original, the, the opening scene, rather, the wedding scene, which was absolutely fantastic. I mean, you fall in love with that movie at that time. Uh, Marlon Brando, it was the best role I've ever seen of any mob guy. He, he was just amazing. He just nailed that role. And you know the history behind it. He went in there with, I think, cotton in his mouth when he did the audition. He was terrific. And I don't think you'll ever see another... Uh, a role like that duplicated. He brought such integrity to that role, it was unbelievable. But that wedding scene was true in many ways because he was there and he was listening to people. They said, you know, a Sicilian cannot uh, uh, disavow a favor when asked on his daughter's wedding day. And he's listening to people coming to him with certain favors, so on and so forth. Well, at the same time, Carlo Gambino uh, did pretty much the same thing. You know, and, and in a way, you know, when I was the guy on New York, made guy on New York, a lot of guys would come to me, and I lived on Long Island, a lot of guys would come to me with a different business deal, and they wanted this and that. And what I did every Monday night, I had a place called Mondays. And if you wanted to see me, propose a deal to me, talk to me about something, you needed my help, you'd come on Monday night, I would sit with you and talk to you and then decide if I was going to do something. I didn't have anybody getting married, so I didn't have to go along with it. But, and I don't know how true that is that, you know, a Sicilian mob guy on the day of his daughter's wedding can't refuse anybody. I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, very, very similar to what really happens in mob life. A lot of times, guys that are in control, people want to meet with us all the time, propose deals with us. So we have a certain place where people can come. We know it's secure. We got all our guys around us. You present the deal, a proposition. You ask for a favor. You need something. So that was very realistic in The Godfather. Very realistic. Another realistic scene. Some other interesting things uh, involving the cast. I can tell you this. Yes, a number of guys that were associated, affiliated with the, with the Colombo family 
were used in the film. Let's go to Lenny Montana. Now, I didn't know Lenny personally at that point. Remember, I was young. I was a young guy, like 21, 22, just becoming a recruit in that life. But Lenny had been around the Colombo family for quite some time. Well, he was on the set really watching the way things were going. And I think uh, um, uh, Coppola saw him and Ruddy saw him and said, wow, this guy's perfect. Lenny was an imposing guy, deep voice. That's how they put him in the role of, the, of Luca Brazzi. They gave him that role. And uh, the funny thing I do know about it, um, uh, again, I didn't know Lenny well at that time. I had met him, but didn't know him well. Uh, but he got very nervous filming around Brando. And they had to, you know, film the scene over a number of times, you know, a couple of sequences. But uh, Lenny was a good guy. I will tell you this. After the filming of The Godfather, I put Lenny in touch with uh, Jerry Zimmerman. Now, you got to understand this. You got this big Jerry Zimmerman, six foot five, imposing figure, Jewish guy. And Lenny Montana, gangster looking, six foot four, six foot five. Put these two together. They could, uh, could conquer the world. And they became very, very close. And they actually were two of my guys. And we did some stuff out in California that is a whole nother uh, YouTube uh, uh, video that we'll do later on. But me, boy, what a team they made. But I like Lenny a lot. He was a good guy. And, uh, you know, he was definitely put in the role in that film in that way because he was actually just standing there for a while watching what was going on. Jimmy Kahn, definitely a, a close friend of who became my captain at that time, Andrew Russo. Great guy, by the way. I love Andrew. And, uh, and Persigo and Junior. And Jimmy Kahn got the role as a result of their friendship. Not that he didn't earn it. He was terrific, great actor. But he was in and he had a relationship with our family. Nothing bad, good stuff. You know, he had a relationship there. Uh, Gianni Russo, um, I know he's been, uh, you know, said a lot of things uh, on YouTube in different interviews. I never met Gianni Russo. I didn't see him around at that time. I'm not going to discount anything that he said. I know he talks a lot about a lot of things. I'm just saying I had no personal uh, uh, relationship with him at that time. I don't know how true it is. I never seen him around. Didn't see him at the league either. Doesn't mean he wasn't there. I just didn't see him. All right, let's talk about the role of uh, Michael in the film, the Al Pacino role. You know, that was one of the first big roles for Al Pacino. I know uh, Coppola had to fight to keep him in. The studio didn't want him. They wanted a main, uh, you know, a bigger name at that time. Coppola loved him. And uh, obviously Coppola was right. Uh, Al Pacino did a tremendous job as Michael Corleone. I can tell you this many times throughout my life, I was compared to Michael Corleone. Why? Young guy, originally wasn't gonna be involved in the life, had a big gangster father. I was going to school, college kid. He was in the military. And the reason we got involved in our in that life, because something happened with our dads. You know, in the Godfather case, it was uh, uh, Don Corleone, Michael's father, being shot and almost killed. You remember that scene? And uh, in my case, my father drawing a 50-year prison sentence, going off to jail. Now, I don't make that comparison. I'm just telling you it's been, I've heard that my entire life. And my answer to that normally is, hey, he was a fictional character. I was a real thing. So maybe it should be the other way around. But anyway, I just throwing that out. It's a fun fact. And again, I don't make that, that comparison, but it's been made quite, quite often. But overall, one of the greatest movies, if not the greatest movie uh, ever produced, in my opinion. They did a masterful job. And even though it was fictional, it was authentic in the way the characters acted. Uh, obviously, the location, the scenery, the script was great. Everything was just great about that movie. A classic, uh, you won't duplicate a movie like that. And again, Godfather 2, pretty much in the same vein. Now, I'm going to talk about this some more, not today because we're running out of time, but I do want to mention something. This book, The Godfather Notebook, I got this at Francis Ford Coppola's vineyard, his winery in Napa Valley. And uh, funny story, you know, it was during COVID. I was up there with my family. And we weren't allowed to go inside into in the gift shop. So, uh, and this is the Inglenook Winery that Coppola owns. Great, by the way, terrific, just great, everything great. So my wife and I, we go in there and we got the masks on and nobody else is in there. And the woman that was in there was following us around, just watching everything that we do. And, um, you know, my wife didn't like the way she was lurking around us and everything. So my wife had left and I was gonna buy this book. And I'm looking around, I'm asking my wife, and the woman says, well, your wife walked out. She said, I think I was a little rude to her because I said a few things to her. So I said, you were rude to my wife? Okay. And I put the book down and I walked out, right? 
My daughter, uh, Amanda, who's actually going in for the surgery tomorrow, she knew that I really wanted that book. This is when the kids are great. So she went back in, she kind of, you know, gave a piece of her mind to the woman in the store and uh, she bought the book for me and brought it back. It's a terrific book. It's, it's, it's just great. It's got the original script in there. It's got Coppola's notes. It talks about different scenes. I haven't gotten into it all of it. And I didn't mention anything in the book here, but I'm going to get into that a little bit because there's some interesting facts in here that even I wasn't aware of. And maybe we can talk about it another time. So that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, we will get back on The Godfather. We will do Godfather 1 and 2 on another Mob Movie Monday. We'll, we'll get into it further. There's so much to talk about with both of these films. I haven't even scratched the surface. But that's it. Remember, please subscribe. we got a lot of great things coming up. I want you to get the alerts. We're doing this three times a week right now. we got some great interviews. Interviewed uh, Daryl Strawberry last Saturday. That'll be coming up pretty soon. And uh, uh, remember, tomorrow, Bruce McNall, part two. You're going to love that. MichaelFrancis.com. The community's growing. We're approaching 6,000 people. And it's not about that. It's about the encouragement that people are giving one another and that I'm able to provide. You want personal coaching, life skills, leadership, I'm your guy. Log on. You can get all the information there. It's growing. We love it. And we, we are grateful for the opportunity to be encouraging and helping all of you. So that's it for today. Okay, have a great rest of the day. And how do I always leave off? Be safe. Be healthy. God bless you all. See you next time.